so recently I got into home brewing and I've had some successes and some failures. And a friend of mine had said, well, you know, can you show me what you do? Because I've explained it a dozen times. Anyway, let's get straight to it. Today, I've never made this, we're making this one, which I bought off of Amazon for £18. It came with this. And it came with the kilo of sugar. What I also bought was this spray malt light. I've read about this and apparently if you add spray malt, whatever spray malt is, I don't know, it makes the finished thing a bit of a fuller flavour. So we only need a kilo of sugar, so we'll be using half of this and half of that. So having a quick look in here, we should have the yeast and the instructions. So in this case, make sure equipment is being sterilized, we'll do that in a second. And I'm going to enter this into a container. So, we need to get it nice and warm first. So I'm going to pop that there. And just open that now. Because if I wait for later, the can will be incredibly hot. the hot water and the reason for the hot water is just to make this solution the extract nice a bit gloopier so that it um, runs into the ferment. Right I have forgotten something super important. It's going to go into this glass. So this was my last home brew. This was a Wix special. It was £12 for a 40 pint kit and I used normal brewing sugar to make it and uh, pop it open. No real smoke or carbonation in this one. There was in other ones. You can just see some bubbles coming up there now. There is a bit of yeast in there, there's a bit of sediment. So we'll just pour it nice and carefully. And I'm watching the neck of the bottle. I don't want the sediment from the bottom. The sediment's not going to hurt you, it won't make you feel sick, it just adds a little off flavour to it. Look at that. Ignore the Stella label. Home brew at its best. I use these swing top bottles. But every time, I give it a quick rinse. And a quick spray with my cleaner. I'll just leave that to stand. So let's see how this one is. It's got a lovely colour. You can maybe see the bubbles just rising there. And it's a bitter, so it's not designed to be anything other than a bitter. It worked out at 3.8%. It's a slight yeasty smell, just tiny. Nothing wrong with that for 55 pence. So Last time I used my fermenter, uh, once I finished brewing, I cleaned it, sterilized it. So I'm going to give it another quick, well, proper clean and sterilize before it goes any further. And I'm going to do that initially with a glove brush. This isn't a sterilizing, this is like a, a pre clean that I do. Luckily, we've got one of these little funky taps. I'm just going to get some hot water in there, and then some cold water. And a little sponge. I want a relatively strong solution. It smells pretty strong. And then we go. It's all surfaces covered in that pre-sterilizing type of 
I don't know if I said already, but this whole area got all wiped down with a, quite a strong dental solution earlier. So pretty much everything around about here is clean. I need my big spoon for stirring, and I'm going to need a clean. Some of the sterilizer I'm going to use. Uh, I've used it a couple times before, seems to do a good job. Put it in water, let it stand, give it a rinse. Instructions. So, excuse my bad eyesight. It says, um, homebrew, the whole site of it, dissolve one or two teaspoons in a gallon of warm water and make sure the solution reaches every part of the vessel to be cleaned, either by agitation or by complete immersion. Five to ten minutes. So, two teaspoons. in about a gallon. So, here's number one, here's number two. I can't remember what this cost, it was about a fiver. We're also going to need this layer, which is the hydrometer, so I'm going to give that a little clean just now as well. And apart from that, everything we kind of need. So, it says about a gallon of water. This is about 22 litres to here that I measured with the jug. So we're going for about, well we go with 22 litres, we might go a little bit higher. Um, for the brew, for the sterilisation, 4 or 5 litres is a gallon, so we're going to about here. A little sponge, here as well. So as that, all we're after. Another little bowl of my cheapest brew I've ever made, which, like I said, was from Wilco. I can't remember what it was called, but it was about twelve pounds. So it also says leave to soak for a small period if it's really thirsty. So cool the night. Rinse thoroughly with clean cold water. So once this is done, like I said, it was already pretty clean anyway. So we can leave that for a few minutes. I'm going to have a little read of these instructions, which shouldn't be too complicated. Empty contents of the can into your fermenter, add eight pints of hot water, and then add the balance of cold water, sprinkle on the yeast. Sugar. Appropriate amount of sugar. Okay, so we know from already, I read the instructions previously, the appropriate amount of sugar is one kilogram. So this is the sugar that came with it, which is a brewing sugar. And because I read that if you buy you spray malt, it gives a richer flavour, I'm going to add half of each of those. So I just need to weigh those out just now. I've never used spray malt before, so I have no idea what it's like. It smells like hops, actually. I'm going to get 500 grams of brewing sugar. Now, brewing sugar and regular sugar, there's not a lot of difference. Castor sugar is probably just as good. This came with a kit. So, topping this up to one kilo seems like an awful lot of sugar, but the reality is. 
all of the sugar should turn into alcohol through the process of the yeast eating the sugar, the byproduct is CO2 and alcohol. So, this lot's probably clean enough. So, the reality is, we're now ready to start making a homebrew. We've got the boiled kettle over there, just need to pour this in. I don't want anything that's in here to touch anything from the inside of that, and I don't want the outside of that to touch that, so I'm going to tip that in there. And it's always difficult to get all this stuff out. You don't need this water anymore. Consider that to be a bit dirty. The extra boiling water, put in the can to get as much out of it as possible. I don't really need the gloves anymore either, I just I don't want the bleachy stuff on my hands. I'm going to measure that. So the destruction said eight pints of hot water and then cold water. That what that should do, because this is hot or boiling water, once we add this hot water then the cold water, we'll hopefully end up with something around 20 degrees. So when we pitch the yeast, it gets to work straight away. So this is one pint to the line. This little slip around. It's not quite totally empty, so we'll give it another couple of goes. But in the meantime, there's no reason why we can't start stirring it. I made a home brew one time a long time ago, and I completely forgot to stir it. And basically, all that happened, all that syrupy stuff just sat in the bottom. And in the end, I had a really awful home brew. So that was a mistake that cost me. Probably 20 pounds of wasted stuff. In the grand scheme of things, it isn't a disaster, but it's quite a lot of effort. So, this process now is maybe an hour. So, looking good. As we've got a bit of time, this is also my last home brew wine. Again, this was a Wilco special, as I would call it, £9.50 for five litres of wine. Um, I can't remember how much sugar I put in, whatever the instructions was, but it was quite cheap. I made it in a demi jar with an airlock, which I forgot to sterilise. I'll have to do that next. And surprisingly, it turned out really well. I'm not saying it's quite like a £5 Chardonnay from Tesco's or Asda, all the shops are available. But it is really quite pleasant. And that worked out at £2.80 a bottle. So made the airlock. I haven't sterilised that. It doesn't really need to be sterilised, only this bottom piece is going to actually touch. Um, it's not even going to touch the hand But I'm going to sterilise it anyway. In this case, I'm just going to use a little bit of bleach. And a bit of cold water. Because it is going to touch the blue part. But we don't really want that to be the source, of, the source of contamination. If we were to get some bacteria in there, you're still going to make a beer. It's still going to be okay. 
but it will just have off flavour. So the cleaner you keep everything, the less likelihood there is to have off flavours in your beer. So we can just leave that there. Get back to the bitter. Awesome. Uh, temperature wise, I've got one of these stick on things. I think I've got they were two ninety nine each. I've got two of them, I think, for a fiver. Again, I think that might be an Amazon purchase. And ideally, when you're brewing, you want to be keeping that temperature not too low, not too high. The book says this tin says uh, it doesn't actually give a temperature, but 18, 20 degrees, stick with 20 degrees, you won't go far wrong. Um, here's the kettle boiled. So hopefully this gets everything out of this can. A very hot can. We're done. We'll give it a good stir. Again, so I'm not sure what would happen, but this is now quite a hot liquid. So if we were to put the yeast straight into this, that wouldn't be a good thing. I read a couple of things about not making too many bubbles. Try not to splash it too much. Um, I've even seen some people purging this with nitrogen or CO2 to keep the oxygen out. So that was a bit splashy there, so I've added some oxygen to that. Not the best of ideas. Also, you see me putting my tools down. When I'm putting them down, I'm laying them down on the lid. So the inside of this lid is being sterilized. Already. So we've got the sugar ready to go. What I also have is this heating bag. So once we get this all in, and you see the temperature coming here. I can plug this in to the handy socket just here. And this is two electrical elements. So I'll put this around the middle to bottom. It'll gently heat the liquid. The kitchen here is about 20 degrees anyway, so it's a good temperature. It's going to be a touch too warm right now. Um, so that's one method of getting it up to kitchen temperature. And I wanted to try and keep it at 20 degrees all the time. So what I might do. In here, if it's getting too warm, I'll turn the heating off or turn one of the radiators down just to try and keep the temperature in this room um, at the right time. I'm not going to wait for that last bit of water. I think this is dissolved, diluted enough. All the gloopiness is gone. I'm going to go ahead now and top this up with the cold water. Again, I don't want this to touch my thing. It's just in case of topping that up with water. But I wonder if it's said to put the sugar in now or later. So it said add 8 pints of water, sprinkle, oh, standby. So, Empty contents of the can into the vessel, add eight pints of hot water, mix and fill with cold water. Okay. Uh, sprinkle the brewing yeast provided, cover and stand in a warm place until fermentation is finished. Can and sugar. So the sugar should have gone. Because of course the sugar is going to be a lot easier to dissolve in warm. than cold water. So we'll pop that in there. So we'll now, now gently stir that. It's got a really nice smell. Many years ago, I lived in Edinburgh, and I lived quite close to a place called the Fountain Brewery. And every week or so, there was a really strong beer brewing aroma. It was quite famous if you came into Edinburgh on the train and you got to Haymarket Station, you'd get this pervading smell 
just like this across the whole city, and it was lovely. And then, of course, that was then doing this exact process on a significantly different scale. Now, I shouldn't put the cold water in there, some of this shivers clumps up. So we were at six and a half, I think, quite. So it's a guideline, it's not a big deal. I'm just going to whack all this one more time. When it comes down to it, what we want is a final temperature of around 20 degrees. The last of those sugar clumps are starting to go. They're not all gone yet, but we're getting there. I've actually got more bubbles in here than I would have liked, but um, this would be, I think, brew number eight or nine for me. The first two brews were a disaster. I don't believe I kept it clean enough. I didn't maintain my airlock properly, I didn't keep the temperature correct, and although I did make weak alcohol, it wasn't nice to drink. Um, and of course what I want is this solution to be completely dissolved, so all the sugar is in liquid. What I want, other brewers might argue, oh, you don't have to worry about it. But um, my background is engineering, so you know, you take your time and get everything mixed properly. Yeah, it should work better. Anyway, back to the cold water. Top it up. We're almost done. This is with the exception of sprinkling in the yeast. I have no idea what yeast this is. doesn't say and I've got loads of air bubbles in this now and I didn't want lots of air bubbles in this because what I'd like is a completely flat solution with no bubbles on the top when I throw the yeast in or to be puerical about it pitch the yeast chuck the yeast in um, so we're about there the bubbles are about there and we're going to go for something above the 22 litre mark. We're almost there. We go for 23 litres. Mm. So if we just go as close as. 500 mil is about a pint, 22 litres is 44 pints. When we actually finish the brew and we siphon it off, we're going to lose probably this much, which is going to be about 2 litres. We're going to have to leave in the bottom where the strong sediment is left behind. And we really don't want that in the brew. Um, Anyway, I'm not intending on touching the beer anymore. Okay, so next up we need to move this over there. And where everything on top of this is sterile. So, this is our kitchen counter. This is going to be quite heavy. So I'll put our towel down just in case we have a bit of spillage. Don't want it all over the place. The towel will absorb it. And we'll pick this bad boy up. There. So you can see already we're at 24 degrees. That's kind of the upper point of pitching. I could add some more cold water to it. But I'm going to take a little bit of a risk. Almost all those bubbles that I talked about earlier have gone. We're 
it's now time to chuck in the yeast, pitch the yeast, and it is just a case of gently sprinkling it over the top so you get a nice even coverage, and then the yeast should filter down through catching the sugar on the way. And I try not to get it on the edge of the container because it just gets stuck there. Okay. Holding this in my hand, I want a little bit of just regular cold water in that. This is through the airlock, so all that's going to happen, I'm just trying to get that 50 50, roughly. Good enough. Popping this on top and then snapping it down. Take the seal and this pops in there. I have to put a tiny bit of acid on there anyway just to make sure it seals. And what's going to happen now? sit there in the corner of the kitchen. I'm going to check it regularly with the temperature. I say at the moment it's a bit too hot. I've got a radiator just here, I can turn that down. And over the next five to ten days, eight days maybe, I'm going to check the airlock, make sure it never runs out. So as this, the yeast, consumes the sugar, it's going to make carbon dioxide and it's going to make alcohol. So the carbon dioxide is a gas, it's going to come up, you're going to see this bulge up and we're going to see bubbles coming from here up, down, through there, but not letting any oxygen back in, keeping our room nice and clean. So I just want to double check we've got a good seal, I do, and we'll come back in a few days time. Thank you. 